When it comes to WoW patches, we've learned to expect the unexpected. And after a drought of major PvP changes for months, we are about to see something massive. Patch 9.1 is a few months away and we got some groundbreaking changes already on the PTR and we want you to be ready for the upcoming meta. Could we see Mistweaver monks roll their way up to the top of the healer tier list? Are Destro Warlocks about to be WoW's most broken spec yet again? Let's take a quick look at the most important changes coming into the early build of 9.1. Before we do, we have a quick question for all of you. Are there any major class changes that you would like to see in 9.1? Maybe you have a checklist of classes that you want to see buffed or nerfed, and we want to know what they are. So let us know in the comments below what your ideal patch would look like. And if you want to stay up to date on the meta and all important changes when the patch hits, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. There you'll find a library of class courses and matchup analysis made by some of the best wow players of all time. Our team of rank one gladiators and professional players share their knowledge in videos that you won't find anywhere else. If you want to increase your skill and rating now and when the patch lands, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Starting off, our class changes are Death Knights, and the whole community is rejoicing due to one huge change. Heartstop Aura has been removed entirely and replaced with a new PvP talent called Shroud of Winter, which reduces the cast range of all nearby enemies by 30%. While the Heartstop removal is more than welcome, this new talent might be incredibly annoying as well, especially if you're a caster DPS getting trained by a Arthas fanboy. Moving on to Druids, there were a few changes to the AoE talents for balanced Druids, but none of them are really impactful outside of teamfights in RBGs. The biggest change overall is a nerf to the balance of all things legendary, which is the primary reason you learned to fear Convoke the Spirits. The crit chance has been nerfed on this legendary, making the Incarn Convoke combo much less scary. Now, instead of spells having 100% crit chance during Incarn Convoke, it will be reduced much lower, which is a comforting change overall. Mages have some huge changes in this build so far, and none more impactful than Kleptomania being Arcane only. This PvP talent has been removed from Frost and Fire, and is now Arcane exclusive. Arcane also got some damage damage buffs to Arcane Blast and a new PvP talent called Arcano Sphere. On top of that, Frost Mages got a new PvP talent called Ice Wall, which gives them a summonable pillar of ice that they can use as line of sight. When combined with a massive buff to Frostbolt damage, we can already see Frost Mages becoming as good as Fire. And as far as Fire is concerned, there were some minor changes to some of their AoE damage, but more importantly, a new PvP talent called Ring of Fire. Apparently, some dev just discovered Johnny Cash, and this ability is shaped up to potentially be broken in RBGs. On top of that, Fire got some much needed nerfs to Kindling and Infernal Cascade. Both of these passives directly contributed to how overtuned Fire Mages have been up to this point. Moving on to Priests, there have been some moderate changes to all three specs, including a new PvP talent called Improved Master Spell, which, according to the responses we have seen so far, is not a very exciting talent. Shadow Priests got some damage nerfs with the removal of the Lasting Plague PvP talent, as well as a nerf to the Dissonant Echoes Conduit. Disc saw a nerf to the Spirit Shell talent, which up to this point was not really used much anyway, and Holy is getting a rework to the Symbol of Hope spell. Right now, it only restores mana, but in the next patch, it will reduce the cooldown of major defensive abilities for your team. While it is not entirely clear which abilities are affected yet, this might be one of the most broken changes from this patch. If spells like Divine Shield, Ice Block, and Cloak of Shadows get affected, you get the idea. Next up, Warlocks are seeing a bit of a rework in this patch, and Destro Warlocks are licking their lips at some of the changes we are seeing so far. The biggest change was the removal of the Focused Chaos PvP talent, replacing it with a passive 40% damage increase to Chaos Bolt in PvP. When combined with a 10% overall buff to Chaos Bolt damage, this means that Warlocks can now Havoc Chaos Bolt two targets for massive damage, something we haven't seen in quite some time. Destro also has a new PvP talent called Bonds of Fell, which creates an AoE snake the damages players that attempt to leave it. This sounds like a nightmare as a melee DPS if you need to leave your circle in order to interrupt a Chaos Bolt to your face. As for Affliction, there was a removal of the underutilized Soul Shatter PvP talent, as well as some changes to Shadow Embrace, Malefic Rupture, and Agony. By far the biggest change, though, is the nerf to the Sackalash's Dark Strike Legendary. This is the infamous Corruption Slow Legendary you are probably familiar with by now. 
With the patch, it will no longer reduce movement speed to 50%, but instead increase curse duration. Get ready to say goodbye to one of the most annoying legendaries in the game. Demo is seeing some minor changes as well, most notably the addition of a PvP talent called Fell Obelisk, which increases your minion's attack speed and reduces your cast time by 20% while active. This comes with a change to the Call Fell Lord PvP talent, which could end up with Demo becoming a high tier spec in PvP. Warlocks as a whole are also getting a new PvP talent called Shadow Rift, which essentially allows them to grip enemy players to their port. So get ready for another obnoxious knock grip mechanic in RBGs. And moving on, by far, no other spec is happier with the patch than Mistweaver Monks, who are seeing some massive buffs to existing PvP talents, as well as some new talents entirely. Counteract Magic, Refreshing Breeze, and Eminence are all being redesigned. The changes to Eminence are looking pretty nutty, as Monks will now be able to port while stunned. Yes, you heard that right, Mistweaver Monks will be able to port while stunned. Their new PvP talents look fairly promising too, with Peace Weaver reducing the cooldown of Revival and making the monk immune to negative effects two seconds after its cast, functioning almost like a miniature Greater Fade. Dematerialize is a new PvP talent that pays homage to Mists of Pandaria. Monks who pick this talent will be significantly harder to kill in stun setups, especially if they can port while stunned. Finally, Thunderous T gives you some additional options, either allowing your Cracking Jade Lightning to instantly knock players back, or Essence Font to increase your movement speed by 70% and grant you a temporary freedom. Despite their best attempts at going for re-stealths this entire patch, sub-rogues have been caught out of stealth yet again with some more nerfs. The Mark of the Master Assassin Legendary has its duration reduced by 40%, reducing the amount of time in which they get guaranteed crits on you after coming out of stealth. On top of that, the Cloaked in Shadows Conduit, which previously allowed rogues to stay in stealth even with dots up, now only has a 4 second duration, meaning they won't be able to run away and reset indefinitely. As for assassination rogues, their neurotoxin PvP talent has been removed and replaced with a new PvP talent called Hemotoxin. This makes Shiv reduce healing received on the target for 40%, essentially giving rogues their own sharpened blade. The last major changes were to Resto Shamans, who have a new PvP talent called Living Tide, which will be a buff to their AoE healing overall. After some preliminary testing, it seems like this talent will make Healing Tide tick for over 3,000 at its peak. Moving on to Covenants, we have the worst news possible for everyone. There are now 40 more new levels of Renown to grind, so get ready to replenish that anima every Tuesday and AFK right-clicking souls in the maw for weeks to come. This is not without reason, however, as all soulbinds now have four more rows, including three more conduit slots, two new traits to choose from, and one new end trait for each soulbind. Using Nagia the Mistblade as an example, you now have two new traits to choose from and a new end trait called Fatal Flaw, which gives 20% versatility after Euphoria ends and will make BM Hunter damage even stronger. Fantastic. There have also been nerfs to some of the more obnoxious conduit abilities, including the infamous Soul Steel Clamps, the annoying Sparkling Drift Globe Core, the rage-inducing Sulfuric Emission, and the forgettable Familiar Predicaments. Moving on, there are also some new Covenant-specific legendaries in the game, meaning that you might have to take a trip back to the Rune Carver yet again. We haven't seen the full list of new legendaries, but the warrior one called Sinful Surge looks quite promising, as if Benthyr Warriors needed another broken legendary to choose from. The complete list of new legendaries hasn't been released yet, but when the patch comes out, we'll let you know exactly which legendaries are worth crafting, but start farming some Soul Ash for now. And now the fun part where we predict what the game would be like if this patch hit live servers tomorrow. For one, we would definitely see a rise of Mistweaver monks. By far, one of the biggest things holding them back is how weak they are in stunts. So the additional damage reduction and ability to port while stunned is a welcomed, but potentially overpowered change. Whether or not these buffs are enough to launch them into the upper tiers remains to be seen, especially considering how every healer besides monk is relatively strong right now. On top of that, Destro could be on the cusp of becoming one of the most dominant specs in PvP yet again. With buffs to Frost Mage, it's incredibly likely that Mage Lock will come to dominate the ladder early on in Season 2. The changes to Sub Rogue might be a bit painful to anyone playing that class, but overall it might be a positive change for the class as a whole. If there could be some additional tuning to make Rogues a bit passively tankier, we could see the end of the Restealth playstyle entirely. And there you have it. 
Those are the biggest changes in patch 9.1 so far. Of course, the PTR will constantly evolve, but we want to keep you up to date on any future changes. When the patch does hit, we'll be sure to let you know all about any changes to the metagame, covenant swaps, and let you know which legendaries are worth crafting. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. We'll be keeping you up to date on any other major patch developments, so you don't want to miss out. For now, take care.